Hello YouTube. Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Today I received a special package, courtesy of a special carrier. Handle with care, right? Check this out. Yeah, that is actually my uh, new 3D printer. It's a Creality Ender 5 Plus. I've been wanting a 3D printer for a very long time. And uh, I'm not endorsed by Creality or any other sponsors in this video. Actually, I just won, wanted one for myself. So this is the first time I've ever even attempted to use one. Um, I've just read about it. I know that they could be kind of a headache. So, but I want to be able to make my own parts, possibly for our off-road equipment, you know, we have a side-by-side, -side, some uh, ATVs, and also some projects I want to get done within the garage and throughout the house. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to learn something new, as well as um, be crafty at the same time. So let me go ahead and set up the camera gear, and uh, let's get filming of this, uh, taking this, this thing out of the box, get it assembled, and do our first print. When it comes to filming, most of us uh, on YouTube um, film by ourselves. We're using a gimbal or a GoPro or some other means or just multiple camera angles. So I decided to come up with a different solution. Here's a DJI Osmo. The camera is actually on the gimbal itself. I'm able to use the gimbal on a tripod and connect it via Wi-Fi to a tablet. So you don't need to have the phone or tablet hooked up to the side. So what I do is I basically use this as a remote control panel and I am able to actually control the whole gimbal head from just this tablet. It's a pretty cool idea. Maybe um, other people will start using this method. It doesn't really interrupt the workflow. Um, the only problem is that you need to make sure that you're within a, like a couple of feet of where you're filming because this doesn't really film very well up close. So I just would like to, this is why this actually is part of this video. You know, I just figured it might be able to help other people out as well. Here I'm using actually another gimbal which is I enabled the motion tracking so you can see that it's actually tracking my movement. It's just another way of using automation. We're finally getting to the unboxing of the Ender 5 Plus. It's very well packaged even though that we had a uh, little drop by our uh, carrier it still didn't seem to affect anything with the packaging. You'll see that I'm just taking everything out. Uh, unfortunately, since I'm new to YouTube, my videos can only be 15 minutes long. You'll see that you have like, all the accessories that are needed. The only problem was was getting some of these uh, accesses out here for the Z axis. So, but other than that, uh, you know, it's absolutely great packaging by Creality. <laughs> my dog Bear just really wants to know what's going on here. He's very interested. Maybe he could start 3D printing soon. Now, if you're here back in the States, don't forget to set the voltage on, on here from 230 to 110. Otherwise, things may not work out for you. Here we're starting on the frame assembly. It's pretty straightforward. This is 2040 aluminum. It's pretty good and stout pieces. It only takes two screws and um, they line up very, very well. Um, again, you may want to uh, just Make sure you grip the corners there, make sure they're nice and flush as you're screwing them in, but very straightforward process.
bottom starting on the top frame. Um, you'll see here that uh, it only takes eight screws. Again, it lines up very well. This is also known as your X-axis. Very straightforward again, just two screws on each corner. Now I'm actually going to step number five, which is installing the Z-axis. Um, in the manual, you'll see it tells you to flip the whole printer onto its side and install it this way. I found this to be a very cumbersome process. Um, basically, all you have to do is just keep the printer out facing towards you and install it that way. Um, I do not know why they have you flip it on the side. You'll see that I just pass it through and it installs really, really fast. Do not flip it on its side. Okay, so here I'm installing the hotbed. Um, you'll notice that the Z-axis is all the way up. It's safely to move these down while none of the motors are plugged in at this time. Do not move them um, while or drag any of the axes around while they're plugged in to the main board because these will act like little generators and it could cause some issues later on. But yeah, move these down because right now there was not enough room for me to install this hot plate without it straightforward process again it just takes eight screws however I did find that one of the corners on the last uh, trying to get in was very very snug so I had to do some more alignment <music> At this point basically everything is assembled and you would just need to put in the filament on the back the holder on the back takes two screws you could basically mount it where you want it I find it best back where they suggest because it goes right underneath the extruder and then all you have to do is plug in your wires they are all labeled for each um, you have your stepper motors and your limit switches and basically um, they did forget to put the E on page 7 which is for your extruder that's all the way in the back above your filament Next, we're going to do some manual adjustments to the lead screws for the Z-axis. Make sure the printer is turned off. And if you have a pair of digital calipers, set the calipers to zero. And then you're going to measure the gap between the hot plate support and the linear rail support. Once you get this measurement, be sure to lock that measurement in place on your digital calipers. You're going to bring it over to the other side. You're going to adjust the lead screw to meet the same gap. Once you have that all set, bring it back to the other side, verify the measurement hasn't moved. Then we're going to turn the printer back on. We want to heat up the bed to an operational temperature. This way we can get the most accurate leveling. So go ahead and set the temperature. I'm just setting it to 70 degrees because that's around the average for PLA. And then once we have it at operational temperature, we're going to proceed with the manual level and then automatic leveling. All right, now you're going to click on leveling. 
it's going to go to the home position automatically. Once the home means complete, the screen will change and you'll be able to do the Z offset. Just grab a sheet of normal paper. You're going to attempt to slide it under. Sometimes it's going to be right against the glass bed, sometimes it won't. You're going to adjust it up or down until we feel the sheet of paper drag across the hot end. It's going to take several attempts to be sure that you have it right. Now we're going to proceed with aux leveling. This is actually a manual process where we're going to use the screws underneath the bed to do a manual level on all four corners. You will not be able to do anything with the center, but we're going to just verify right now as it's doing its uh, bill touch leveling in the center that all of our settings from before we're doing this Z offset is still in place. So I just like to verify once it drops that we still put a piece of paper underneath right now and verify that it's still dragging across. Now you proceed with the corners. I'm going to start with number two. You're going to again put the piece of paper underneath. This would be the same for all four corners. You're going to adjust the big thumb wheel on the bottom until you can feel it, the paper just drag across. Now we're going to do a check leveling. What this will do is do a 16 point precise bed height measurement. The printer will automatically compensate for variable bed heights. So this will definitely um, help with any discrepancies that might be within the bed and help with a level print. Okay, sorry I actually didn't post this uh, during the walkthrough of the printer, but I didn't have the correct camera angle on how to load the filament through the runout sensor and up through the extruder. Um, but as you can see, I am printing what's a kind of a traditional thing, that is a uh, calibration cube. So you can see the X, Y, and Z axis and see how well your printer prints. And you can try to make adjustments. Uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe and like the, my video. Thank you.